Gentleman's time has expired. Chair recognizes uh, Mr. Clyde for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Comer, for allowing me to participate in this hearing today, and thank you to our witnesses. Uh, it's nice to actually see some of the city council in person. For far too long, our nation's capital, which is supposed to represent a beacon of freedom, patriotism, and prosperity for all Americans, have been beleaguered by violent crime. Like many Democrat-run crime-ridden cities, Washington is now notoriously unsafe. Over 19 million people visited D.C. in 2021. Our nation's capital city must be safe for all constituents to visit their elected officials and learn about our nation's history and government, just as it must be safe for residents, local businesses, D.C. and D.C. Commuter commuters. However, this is simply just not the case. While local Democrat officials claim otherwise, the data doesn't lie. According to the Metro Police Department, so far this year, in less than three months, there have already been more than 50 homicides, 40 cases of sexual abuse, more than 1,600 incidents of motor vehicle theft, 600 robberies, 220 burglaries, nearly 1,900 cases of theft from auto, over 1,700 cases of theft, assaults, assaults with a deadly weapon, and the list goes on. Crime is clearly on the rise in our, nation, in our nation's capital city, yet local leaders have utterly failed in their duty to protect residents and visitors, as well as to provide MPD officers with the resources and political backing and I emphasize that, needed to effectively defend D.C. from rising crime. <clears throat> Mr. Mendelssohn, do you think there's a crime problem in D.C.? A yes or no is sufficient. Crime problem? Yes. Yes. There's a, thank you. And do you believe as the chairman of the D.C. City Council, your role and the council's should be to protect the residents and visitors in Washington? Yes. Again, thank you. So given the troubling crime crisis here in Washington, which just which in just the last week led to numerous crimes, including the horrific stabbing of one of Senator Rand Paul's staffers and a half dozen juveniles shot in the last 48 hours, and the assault of Democrat Congresswoman Angie Craig in the elevator in her own apartment complex in the morning, the very morning of the vote in the House to take down the Revised Criminal Code Act. You know, given the crime crisis, isn't it the council's responsibility to ensure Americans in our nation's capital are safe? It's our responsibility to do everything we possibly can, yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> now, when the House voted to, um, to strike down the, uh, the D.C. Revised Criminal Code Act, one of the things I believe that you said, Mr. Mendelson, was um, you were going to pull the bill back so that you could continue working on it. Is that correct? Yes. Wouldn't it have been the appropriate time to take back and continue to work on it um, after Mayor Bowser vetoed the misguided bill instead of, after, instead of overturning her veto and sending it to the Congress? Uh, I pulled it back because it was clear that we didn't have the support in the Senate. And as uh, many of us do as legislators, when we see that we're losing, we pull it back to work on it. Mr. Chairman, I would like to request unanimous consent to submit for the record a copy of Mayor Bowser's letter to Mr. Mendelson, dated January 4, 2023, where she wrote, this bill does not make us safer when referring to the revised Criminal Code Act of 2022. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. Mr. Allen, in 2020, did the D.C. Council pass a budget slashing $15 million from the Metro Police Department? The Sorry. The council passed a budget that redirected $9.6 million to other public safety efforts. That's about 1% of the Did they of the strip MPD it budget. from the Metropolitan Police Department? $9.6 million was redirected from the Metropolitan Police Department to other public safety efforts that represent about 1% of a half billion dollar budget. So, <clears throat> I recently introduced a resolution of disapproval to block the implementation of the D.C. Council's so-called Comprehensive Policing and Justice Reform Emergency Amendment Act of 2022. And I'm thankful that my common sense resolution has the support of the D.C. officers and the D.C. police union, because in reality, this is a backdoor to fund the police. Though you may not take a whole lot of money from them from the front end, what you do is you reduce their morale and you make them quit so they don't really want to work for D.C. anymore. Mr. Pemberton, as a police officer in the District of Columbia, can you tell me about the impacts that the council's bill would have on policing in our nation's capital city? Uh, you, you would see the, the uh, number of officer, officers continue to leave. Now, keep in mind, this bill has actually been in effect since June of 2020. They've passed it on an emergency basis. Correct. And this is the number one reason that we see our, the best of the best officers leaving this agency. Over 1,200, am I correct, or about that, that number? That's right. O at least over 1,000 since this bill has been passed. That's correct. Okay. And you haven't been able to replace them either? 
Uh, no, we, we can hire almost no one. I, I think we're, we're still running a deficit of 20 to 25 officers a month. Thank you. Mr. Pemberton, do you, do you believe the council's bill would increase public safety for D.C. residents, visitors, and small businesses, or would it have the opposite effect? And I've run out of time, so you're... I think it would be catastrophic. I think it would be an absolutely catastrophic situation for the city based on crime and the police department. Thank you very much, and I yield back.